Hi, this is CS Professor Pam with Jumpstart Code, and today we are going to get started with JavaScript. And we are going to start from the very basics. So in previous tutorials, we have talked about HTML and CSS. HTML is what defines the structure of your web page, the elements that are on it. CSS defines the look of your web page, the colors, the fonts, how things are laid out. JavaScript is what provides action to your web page. So that's what we're going to get started with today. But we are going to start from the very beginning. So what I want you to start with, remember, you should always have a folder where all your projects are. I'm going to start from the very beginning here. I'm going to make a folder in my projects folder and I'm going to call it first JS for my first JavaScript project. All right? The editor that I use is VS Code. I'm going to open up my Visual Studio Code and in Visual Studio Code I am going to uh, navigate to this folder that I just created. So in VS Code, I'm going to go to File, Open Folder, and I'm going to go find the folder that I just created in my projects called FirstJS. All right, now we still need an HTML file and we need a CSS file. And remember, it's a good idea to continue to practice all these things. So here in my first JS folder, <coughs> I'm going to add a new file. I'm going to call it <coughs> index.html, right? And in this file, we need the fundamental skeleton of our page. And if you are using uh, VS Code here, you can um, use a template here to get started although it is good to get used to typing this in. But here is a very basic template. What do we have in it? Let's take a look. We've got our doc type. We've got our HTML section. Inside of HTML, I have my head section and my body section. I'm actually going to indent those over. In the head, we have a title, and I'm going to call it First JS, and I'm going to put an H1 element in my page. So this is going to be just getting started, and we always want to make sure that everything works. So I am going to save this. I'm going to right click and open it with Live Server, and that is going to bring this page up, and this is what I have. Right. Um, let's go ahead and add a CSS file too, even though we're not going to focus on that, but just as a, a review of how we connect everything. So in FirstJS, I'm going to add a file called styles.css. The only thing that I'm going to put in there is a background color. Uh, we will pick a color here. Let's do this beige looking color. Let's go connect that in my head section with a link command href equals styles.css. We need rel equals style sheet. Right? Let's make sure that our CSS co is connected. I'm going to save all and Actually, I don't see. This is why you double check everything. So that is my file name there. Let's make sure we saved everything. There you go. Sometimes you just haven't saved everything. So again, a good reason to double check before you move on. Now, we are going to connect the JavaScript file here. So I'm going to make one more new file. I'm going to call it main.js. Okay, and JavaScript is another language, right? HTML has certain syntax, CSS has certain syntax, 
JavaScript has its own specific syntax. And one of the first things I need you to understand about JavaScript is it is case sensitive. So you have to be mindful of that when you're using JavaScript commands. Also, JavaScript commands um, can have a semicolon at the end or they actually work without a semicolon at the end as well. Most of the time, I actually do put semicolons at the end of my JavaScript commands. All right, so how do we connect our JavaScript file to our HTML file? The same way we had to connect a CSS file, we need to do that with JavaScript, but it is a different command. We use a script command, and the best place to put this script command is at the very end of your body. You will find that there are multiple ways to do almost anything in programming. But what I try to show you are um, the ways that are that cause less problems. So we're gonna put this script command right before my closing body tag. And in this command, you have to use source source equals and let's put the name of our javascript file right now how can we test to see if this is actually connected I we're, i'm going to teach you your very first javascript command so let's go over to main.js and there's a command that allows you to basically generate a pop-up message the command is called alert and I'm just going to put connected, right, with a semicolon at the end. So let's save everything here, save all. And look at what happened when my page refreshed. It gives me this pop-up message, right? I'm going to refresh it again so you can see. So this confirms to me that my uh, main.js is connected to my HTML file, right? Um, I want to show you again, JavaScript is case sensitive. And so if I type that command with a capital A, then I am not seeing anything. Um, and if I inspect this page, and I go to the console, this is gonna be the only way that you are going to see any error messages that you have in your JavaScript code. You will not see them just in the browser. So again, to, to show you that again, anytime you're doing JavaScript, you should have your console open. So I'm right clicking on this page. I'm in Google Chrome. I'm going to inspect and in inspect, you want to open the console. And here it's telling me that there's an error on line one because it doesn't understand what this A is. Basically, it doesn't understand this command. Uh, actually, I have an extra line there, so let's fix that. All right, so now it's telling me alert is not defined. So alert with a capital A is not a valid JavaScript command. Alert with a lowercase a is a valid JavaScript command. And we see the connection. So it's really important as you're going along that you are double checking and that you are looking at any error messages that you have over here. All right, so the first uh, program that you typically do in programming is called your hello world program and a really important here's your second JavaScript command a really important command in JavaScript is console.log this allows me to write information to that console that we just saw so I'm gonna put hello world in the console. Now again, notice the syntax of this. The command is console.log, all lowercase. In parentheses, you can put something that you want to display. 
And since what I'm displaying is a string, it needs to be in quotes. It will work whether it is single quotes or whether it is double quotes. All right. So let's save this. You notice I what I did here. Sorry, I kind of jumped past this. I commented out this alert because once I know that things are connected, I don't necessarily want to have to click off that button every time. So by putting slash slash in front of that command, I have turned it into a comment, right? We've seen comments in all our different languages. In HTML, a comment, remember, is this uh, with uh, angle bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash, kind of a convoluted comment syntax. In CSS, a comment is slash star, uh, and then it closes with a star slash. And that style also works in JavaScript. But if I just want the rest of this line to be a comment, if I just put slash slash in front of it, you'll notice it's green now, so it's being ignored. So this is going to be my command that is going to run. So just real quickly, as we go through, what's going to happen is as your page is being built, when it gets finished with building all whatever is the content on your page, this is going to uh, pass control to your main.js. And so this console.log statement should be executed. So let's see if that happens. Right. So here you see it in the console. Again, this is why you really want to have the console open as you are working on your page. You see, if I refresh the page, I'll see that come here again. So this is a really important debugging tool is using the console and using these console.log statements. All right. Now, what we really want to do is make things happen on the page when we click something. So that means if I want to generate a message that is going to be displayed on this page when I click something, then we've got to go to our HTML and we need to add a couple things. So I am going to add a button, right? Um, Generally, when you are interacting with a page, you do a lot of clicking on buttons. I want to be able to identify this button. So I am going to give it an ID um, and I'm going to call it um, hello. Right. That's just a name where I can identify this button. OK, let's just see what happens when I add a button in here like this. So let's save. Let's refresh the page. Now, where's my button? Oh, I forgot to put some text on it, right? So we need to give the button some text, right? My button is going to say, the text is going to be say hello. So we'll save that, take a look. I kind of, it's really small. I'm going to make this bigger. Um, if I want to make that bigger, then we can use some CSS to uh, style our button, right? Let's do a little bit of CSS. If I'm styling an ID, or actually since I only have this one button, let's just use button to style it. Um, I can do font size. Uh, let's do 16 pixels. I'm kind of guessing at a size here. Right. We want to make this a little bit bigger. Here we go. Now we can see our button there, right? All right. Now I want to be able to click this button. There we go. and have something happen, right? So we're gonna have to talk about how to do that. But what when I click it, I want a message to display on the page. Well, so I need to provide a place 
where I want that message to be displayed. So I'm going to go back to my HTML and I'm going to add an H2 and I'm going to give it an ID equals MSG for message with no content because we're going to actually put content in this button when we uh, in this element when we click the button. Okay, so again, what do we have? Just our header. We've got a button that we can click and we've got a place where I can generate some sort of message. Let's just save this again, take a look, and uh, it looks like, just want to make this not quite as big. There we go. Right. And again, we're seeing over here in my console, my message over there. All right. So let's pick this up in the next video. So let's make sure that what you have right now is your index.html. You have main.js. We only have one command in there that was initially just to make sure that things were connected. And now we have a console log there and we have just a little bit of styling that's going on on, on our page. And in the next video, we're going to understand how to actually attach some specific action that we want to happen when we click this button.